This community program would not be possible without the financial support of our corporate sponsors and community members. Tri-Cities Community Television would like to especially thank the cities of Port Moody, Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam for their belief and support of community television. If you wish to be part of our volunteer team, become a sponsor or make a financial contribution to support community programming, please feel free to contact us at the following location. So we're here at Riverview Hospital. It's a pretty amazing place. It's been around for more than 100 years. The building behind me is West Lawn. It's the oldest of the buildings. It was the first building built. Uh, it was built in 1913, and as you can see, it was actually mothballed effectively in 1983 and never maintained since then. So you can see the damage that the years have had on what was a magnificent heritage building and really has lost all of its heritage value. You see, we're in, a, we're in a, an arboretum that's quite magnificent as well, but some of the trees that are also 100 years old have failed. They've hit storm damage and there's a chainsaw right now cutting them up and trying to maintain a little bit this spectacular arboretum, this wonderful grounds. You see the, buildings, the building that has, has failed, the building that, that is of no value anymore, we have other buildings on the site, though, that still have an awful lot of use left in them, some, some year, many years of use left. And the building right in front of us, this is Center Lawn. It was built in 1924, and it was the longest used building, the longest occupied building on Riverview. It actually was used until four years ago with patients. Um, there's a, a further building uh, about a half a kilometer away. It's called East Lawn built in 1930. The one that's used the most for the film industry, because that's one of the main functions right now here on Riverview, is Crease Clinic. Crease Clinic was built post-war, 1948 it was completed, uh, and it was primarily built for those people returning from the war with what was called shell shock then, now it's called PTSD. Uh, and many of those veterans were treated for years in that really spectacular building. And today it's used primarily by the film industry as a university, as a justice building, as a penitentiary, uh, any number of uh, roles that it plays in film. Riverview has more than 100 buildings and the buildings are um, ranging essentially in age from very new buildings, there's four or five that are built in the last decade, to buildings that are now failed completely. And we here in Coquitlam have contemplated how we could possibly use Riverview's buildings, use Riverview to continue the long-standing role that it played in mental illness. Mental health and addictions is one of the big challenges we have today, particularly with the fentanyl crisis that really has changed the context of mental health. It has made it so that the level of urgency is so much higher. We had a report drafted by uh, a couple of years ago here in Coquitlam by Dr. John Higginbottom. Dr. Higginbottom used to be the vice president of Riverview Hospital and worked for many years here. The report he proposed was that one of these spectacular buildings, and it was actually this one that hit, was his recommendation, Center Lawn, could be used to, uh, to treat those with severe mental, mental health and addictions, the SAMI population, significant mental health and addictions. He proposed that we take these buildings and identify one that can be repurposed for a population that is really struggling right now. Fentanyl has taken more than 
900 lives in 2016, almost five a day that die to this horrible, uh, horrible, horrible drug that didn't exist a decade ago. So we in Coquitlam are hoping that the provincial government will contemplate really an, a, a significant expansion of the treatment options. To their credit, they actually have uh, started already. They've, there are two buildings here on Riverview, Hillside and Brookside, that have been repurposed in the last couple of years and now house people and treat people with mental health and addictions and do it very successfully with Coast Mental Health. There's another two buildings that are currently under construction. They're break, breaking ground to replace the Burnaby Centre for Mental Health and Addictions uh, at, at Willingdon, but also to replace the Maples Adolescent uh, Mental Illness Treatment Centre, uh, again for addictions, and the Provincial Assessment Centre. We think that those are really important initiatives. We really believe that Riverview Hospital could regain a critical mass of state-of-the-art mental health and addiction services, really regaining part of the role that it played in a different era. This was built as an asylum. This was built in an era when we stored the mentally ill. But with the introduction of antipsychotic and psychiatric drugs, it was possible to move mental health treatment back into the community. And that worked for many, but it failed many. We believe now that there is a role for some institutional care and we're looking to the province to contemplate whether some of that could be here at Riverview uh, with repurposed buildings, renovated buildings, but also with the new buildings that, they're under, that are under construction. My name is Richard Stewart. I'm mayor of Coquitlam, and we're standing here on Riverview, the Riverview Hospital lands, 240 acres of spectacular heritage buildings and arboretum and forests. 240 acres that has been dedicated for 100 years into the service of British Columbians who have mental illness and who have addictions. We've called on the provincial government to contemplate re-establishing one of these buildings for the treatment of addictions here in the province and really re-establishing mental health services on the site. Uh, my family faces mental health issues and we know, as many families do, the challenges with mental illness and addictions we in Coquitlam want that kind of service to be re-established here at Riverview Hospital. I'm Terry O'Neill, a Coquitlam councillor, but more importantly, a longtime board member of the Coquitlam Foundation. I like to say that the Coquitlam Foundation is your one-stop shop for community philanthropy. And that gets people to raise their eyebrows and say, what do you mean by that? And I explain that really, whether you want to donate, whether you want to set up something to donate in per perpetuity, or whether you want some money, a grant or bursary or scholarship, the Coquitlam Foundation can do all of that for you. Let's start with a donating. Uh, just a straightforward donation to the Coquitlam Foundation's general fund will help fund our operations or our general community fund will help subsidize all the community grants that we give out every year. So that's, a, that's an important way. And how can you do that? Well, you can write a check, of course, but you can go right to our website, coquitlamfoundation.com, and there's a Donate Now button, and that'll take you right through a process where you can donate directly to us. Our motto is Invest, Enrich, and Inspire. You can invest with us. Uh, we can enrich a community and we'll inspire everybody to make this community of ours that we all love so much that much better. One of our funds is the Symington Endowment Fund. It's designed to assist children with living with autism and other mobility challenges through grants and bursaries for one-on-one -on -one therapy and summer camp programs. 
The fund also assists youth at risk programs and in athletes who enrolled in competitive gymnastics programs throughout the Tri Cities area. Scarlett started training when she was about three years old, and、mm -hmm. she's almost 11. And she currently trains 24 hours a week. She thoroughly enjoys it. It's just her absolute passion.、Um, it, in, it takes a lot of time and a lot of commitment,、um, but she loves what she does. She does a lot of competitions.、Um, we've relied、um, quite heavily on the support that we've received from the Symington Endowment Fund.、Um, it's, it's quite an expensive sport. Um, traveling, competitions,、um, training camps that are not just here in BC, but all over Canada that we have to travel to. So the support from the fund has enabled her to continue、um, to follow that passion at the high level that she's now achieving. She's competed as a, a Canadian West, Western Championships in the last three years. The last season in May, she won four, five gold medals at Western Canadian Championships. So this year she will be trying to achieve a high performance level, which will mean one competition at the beginning of the year in Nova Scotia. And if she makes Elite Canada, then we will be traveling further after that too. My name is Clarice Hutchinson, and I have two daughters in the、uh, in,、um, in the Club Aviva、uh, athletic program. There's、uh, Athena Hutchinson,、uh, my ten-year-old daughter, who's in competitive gymnastics. And I have、uh, Maria Lena, who's in the、uh, Empowering Steps Movement Therapy Program. They're there together, working together in two whole different genres, which is wonderful. Yeah, it definitely is a confidence-building thing and a strengthening、uh, motivation for her, and, and and it makes her feel purposeful. And and how to move her her body in in space. I mean, she's very low muscle tone. It's coordination. Brings in all of those、uh, things that we take for granted that our bodies do just naturally, but for her is very difficult and very challenging. So the Symington Endowment Fund has enabled my、uh, daughter to just grow as an individual and, and lend her the support that she needs、uh, to improve her physical well-being. For more information on how you can make a donation or apply for funding from the Coquitlam Foundation, go to www.coquitlamfoundation.com. Please note the deadline for submitting funding applications for the 2017 granting cycle is rapidly approaching. It is 4 p.m. Wednesday, February 15th. Again, for more information, go to www.coquitlamfoundation.com. On Monday, January 30th, Port Moody Fire Rescue held a press conference to publicly express their gratitude for Port Moody resident Brian Borshoff, who recently made a donation of two pet oxygen mask kits. Which will allow firefighters to treat a wider variety of pets suffering from smoke inhalation. Today we were、uh, able to have Brian come down with his dog、uh, Ramley here, and uh, uh, Brian uh, was very kind to uh, donate us uh, uh, two uh, kits here for our, our four and、uh, two-legged friends and a part of our family.、Uh, we just want to take this、uh, opportunity to say、uh, to thanks to Brian on behalf of the city of Port Moody. For me, fire rescue and the residents of Port Moody、uh, for his kind donation. When we come across a victim animal in a、uh, fire, we would be just applying a standard O2 mask onto the, the animals, and sometimes、uh, it was effective, sometimes it was ineffective. What it does is it helps deliver a more saturated rate of oxygen to the、uh, animals and for a quicker recovery when exposed to chemicals or、uh, smoke. Often, when our firefighters are going in and doing searches on fires, we typically、uh, end up having to chase the animals. They get under beds. Uh, cats hide. They have it underneath the mattresses, and、uh, often our our guys are、uh, getting bit trying to get these animals out.、Uh, but when we do finally get a hold of them,、uh, get them out and、uh, and try and get them oxygen as quick as possible. While Brian credits his wife Shannon for making note of the need in the community, they are both to be commended for stepping forward and doing what they could to address the problem themselves. My lovely wife Shannon, we watched.、Uh, News about a year ago, when we saw that a couple of animals were、um, killed in a fire, and the smoke inhalation, so they succumbed to their injuries. So that's what she brought to my attention to do this. So that's what we started in the process. On behalf of Burnaby Auto Body, which is my company, we're donating to the City of Port Moody Fire the、um, oxygen pet masks. It's our way of thanking everybody and giving back to our community. This has been Jeff Scott reporting for Tri Cities Community Television.
Hello and welcome to Tri-Cities Community Television. My name is Ryan Clark and I'm with the POCO Sports Alliance. I'm very excited today to have some great guests. Today we have from Clinch MMA Gym, Coach Shauna and Coach Sal. What a great opportunity for us to get insight into worlds of mixed martial arts and how it lives here and breathes here in our community. Welcome both of you. Let's get right to it. Shauna, tell me, you're a coach there, but you also I know you're a mom too. How do you, how did you, first of all, how did you get into the sport? Uh, my journey really started organically. We were in Burnaby before, and uh, we moved to Port Coquitlam, and I was just able to start training. Yeah, just start training. You start getting into the training. Sal, what about you? How did you get into this sport? My parents, they put me in at such a young age, and then I, I started all different types of martial arts, and uh, I got into kickboxing when I turned 19, and it was a really big difference from the traditional martial arts to the kickboxing contact. Interesting. So I know, obviously, from a community standpoint, you have all sorts of different people who can walk through your door probably see youth, you probably see, well, what, what kind of people do you see actually just walking through your door saying, hey, I want to try this out, what do you guys see? We see all types of people, it's Canada, you know, so like we open the doors to anyone, we train everyone, and we train actually everybody, any, any body type that comes in, we're really happy to train them. All different ages? All different ages. Yeah. All different walks of life. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you, Shauna, from your coaching standpoint, do you see, is it young, do you work with young girls, do you work with, you know, moms coming in, what, what do you see and who do you get to work with? Yeah, uh, I get to work with a, a variety of, of different um, women. We, I usually work with um, teenagers, lots of teenagers come in, kids, young, young, young children, um, young, young, young women come in. Do you find that when the young girls come in, is it to learn self-defense? Is it to do because, hey, I didn't want to play a sport that's kick or throw ball or shoot puck or anything? They wanted to maybe get a different type of uh, workout in there? Or why, why are they coming in? Um, I, I believe that they're, they're coming in to learn new techniques. Um, yeah, just... Some, some people actually search her out. Like the parents actually want the kids, to, the daughters to train with Shauna. Yeah. So they come out and they travel from other municipalities just to get some training in with her. Interesting. So when you... Also when you come in, I'm, I'm just imagining the people who come in. So you have like, I see the moms and the dads coming in too, and then I see youth coming in. I, know, I understand also that you guys do a really good job on reaching out to the communities. Maybe for some people that... Or some, especially on the youth side, that maybe have come from rather financially challenged, or maybe they've gotten into some bad things and gone a bad way. And part of what you do, I think, is kind of, I understand, is bring them back onto the straight using mixed martial arts as kind of a way to keep them, you know, straight, so to speak. We've had, yeah, we've had a numerous, numerous kids coming off the street, and we, we love training those guys and reprogramming them and re, re, uh, pro, rewiring their bodies and their minds to think a little bit differently. We used to have an outreach program out in Burnaby yeah. years ago, and it was, it was more difficult to get it running out in Port Coquitlam. Yeah. But if people can't afford the training, you know, we don't, it doesn't bother us. They can still come out and train, come out and learn. When people first walk in to the gym, so Sean, if people first walk into the gym, what's the feeling they get? Because I would imagine you know, when, when they hear mixed martial arts, and it's got obviously great publicity with UFC, but there might be a little bit of an intimidation factor in there. When you first walk into the doors, what kind of, ex what, what, do, what do I experience? Um, we welcome everybody, and we just really want to let everybody know that it's more of a family. We have a, more of a family atmosphere. Um, so we really just engage them to encourage them to come in and, and to just uh, kind of be open, open with the training, right. open with their minds. So do they then, you know, you're sitting down, and obviously there might be an intimidation factor thinking, Oh yeah, I might walk out of this with a. I might get hurt. I might get you know. I want to. I want to learn these skills, but I don't want to suddenly show up the next day to work or to school with a black eye or a little knock on the head or anything like that. How, how do I? How do you address that? Because that might be a fear when I first walk in. I mean, accidents happen. You know, like in, in any type of uh, training you go to, this, there could be accidents. But we really, there's all walks of life. People come in. There's lawyers. There's doctors. There's dentists, and they can't afford to have like blemishes or marks on their face. You know, like it just doesn't look good for business. So we make sure, like, not everybody coming there to fight. It's a big family atmosphere in there. So is it really more? Con so that's a good to point. It's not necessarily about the fighting. It's conditioning, isn't it? Is that really? Because that's really what this. This is different than just kind of going to a gym and kind of putting on your eye, your headphones and just mindlessly working out. Shauna, is that what you kind of get from the, do you, do you get that from the people that you work with too on the, on the floor? Are they coming in, hey, I just want a different workout instead of just going to the gym and lifting weights or just sitting on a treadmill? Yeah, I, th I believe that they really want to kind of open their mind and uh, learn different techniques and um, yeah, just... See skills, is, is that what it's really about, skills? It's all, you know, they come in and they start working out and they start sweating. A lot of guys come in just to 
get that cardio workout. They, they, they're thinking it's either UFC or it's like a cardio kickboxing, but it's not. And then once they start learning techniques and skills and they start learning new things, they start really getting excited and they want to keep coming back and learning more. Yeah, because I would think that would be one of the big drivers, I know, for me. Like, hey, I get to learn new stuff. So I go in here, you know, whether you're going to the gym for an hour or I come to your gym for an hour, I'm learning new things for you. This is, I'm going to walk away a little better at something than when I walked in there, not just, hey, I got to sweat. I, it's actually more, but I'm sure this is a great workout as well. Yeah, and if they're not feeling that, then they're not, they're, they, they shouldn't be at that gym then. So, now let's say I get really into this, whether it's a, a youth or whether it's an adult, you start getting really excited, and you want to start getting into, hey, I want to maybe step into the octagon, maybe because I got really excited because I saw it in a pay-per-view, and I want to start, that's a different mindset. How do you get them into that headspace? Oh, they got to train. They have to be, you know, my wrestling coach told me, you know, years ago, that you have to be honest with your training. And I always tell this to my athletes, you have to be honest with your training. If you're honest and you feel like you've trained and you've peaked, then you're ready. And you can walk them in through, get them into that headspace? They'll be in that headspace when they're already ready. Then the game plan comes after that. Okay. Shauna, then when you're working with athletes too now, give me, I know your background's really neat in the sense that I know you even got recently called up by the WWF wrestling, which I know is another huge entity. How did that all go? How did that even work out? How did you get that call? Yeah, um, we just had a scout come down and he kind of scouted me out and um, I was able, I was in, invited to um, fly down to Orlando and, and partake in that. Um, so it was really, it was really great to just kind of go down there and no distractions and just be able to train down there. Because that's obviously a neat world being in that, you know, these are all the big wrestlers that are trying to make it. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Is that something you had to really train hard for? So when you got down there, you're like, is it, how, how does that even work? Well, I train um, all the time anyway, so I was kind of already in shape when I went down there. But, yeah. uh, Think so. Yeah. So tell me, if I want to be in this, you know, get, to be decent, you know, not everybody wants to be like black belts like you guys and be at the top tier level, but I just want a good workout. What do, is this like going to the gym? What, is, what do I need to commit to, do you think? Three times a week, yeah. you know, is, is the I think two times a week is a minimum, but I, I would recommend three times a week. So like going to the gym, like I would go to the gym three times a week. Exactly. So it's similar then. So and what could, you, what could you really accomplish three times a week? Now, yeah. I know you guys are also really excited. You work with like a lot of the stunt actors and models. I heard you know, call upon you guys to send them, hey, we got a big movie shoot coming up. How does that go? How do you get that call? Oh, like some of the guys are, are doing movies or doing stunts, so I get the chance to work with them on their falls and, and their flips and their fight scenes and stuff, so that's pretty exciting as well, too. That's really neat. Do you guys ever get called in to be any extras in those movies, or no, we're just, we train them and get ready for the movies? We're just so busy doing so much other stuff that we haven't even hit that branch yet. Oh, that's neat. That's a neat way to be able to spend out when you have all those, the working out, the fighting, and then you got the, combat, the training for movies. That's great. You know, in looking at this, what, what's your goal and what's your vision moving forward for the gym? You know, again, UFC has put mixed martial arts way up on a huge pedestal, and obviously, as you mentioned, the WDLBF, that has tie-in as well. What's your vision going forward for this and, and, and your community engagement calling? I think, you know, like uh, martial arts is growing by the day and, and especially women in martial arts and being accepted as, as fighters and athletes. And I just see it just growing more and more awesome. vigorously. Sean, do you see that too in what you do? Definitely see that, yeah. Lots of uh, women coming through the door. And so when you're getting a lot of the women coming and saying, I just want that other workout, eh? Yeah. That's really neat. Guys, thank you so much for being part of it. Yeah, I think you guys run a great gym over there. Clinch MMA gym is outstanding and really appreciate your time and coming with us today. For part Ryan Clark from the Proco Sports Alliance, thanks for joining us and we look forward to bringing you more of the world of sport here in your local community. Hello, Pomo. My name is Heidi Madral and I'm the volunteer board director at the Port Moody Community Foundation. This year, as with the last 28 years, we're opening our new granting cycle for 2017. Our grants are designed to help community impact and projects in our local area that service our local community. Over the last 28 years, we've invested in particular projects in arts and culture, recreation, youth, aged services, ecology and heritage. This year, we're starting again and our granting applications are now open. We have $6,000 that we grant out in usual grants, but this year we have something different. We're partnering up with the Community Foundations of Canada for their wonderful celebration of Canada 150. These grants are available anywhere up to $15,000 and they're designed to create the change that you've been looking for in your community. How it works is, say you apply for a grant for $2,000, 
$1,000 comes from the Community Foundations of Canada and the second thousand dollars comes from the Port Moody Community Foundation. You're then required to go out and encourage participation and partnerships with your community. So private individuals and private businesses are encouraged to join with our registered charities to create a full package of a four thousand dollar community project. Please contact us for more information at www.portmoodyfoundation.ca Also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Port Moody Foundation. We look forward to building and inspiring new community efforts for 2017. Let's celebrate Canada 150 together. I'm Thank John you. Dyack. I'm the chairman of the board of the Port Coquitlam Community Foundation. We were started approximately five years ago with the purpose of serving the citizens. Because we're the latest of the foundations, we're doing things a little differently. We focus on innovation and we also focus on trying to find those small charities the ones that do really good work for the citizens, but they have a hard time raising money. They just don't have the profile. They're just not known. And so what we do is we go and find them and we vet them for you and we uh, make sure that the work they're doing is the kind of work you'd want us to have them do. And then we fund them and we raise our money through businesses, through uh, fundraisers, uh, our annual croquet tournament, and also through your donations. So. We'd love to have you check us out. Our website is exceptional. It's www.pocofoundation.com. There's videos, there's stories, and we think you'll find the website really interesting, and we'd love your support. Thank you. For community organizations looking for support from the Poco Community Foundation, the deadline for applications for grants is March 1st. Hello, my name is Donna Bonertz, and I'm the Employment and Rehabilitation Coordinator for the New View Society. Here in the Tri-Cities, New View Society has been providing services uh, to people with serious and persistent mental health problems for over 43 years. Uh, we have worked uh, quietly in the community to reduce stigma and we really appreciate our connections with the community that we live in and that we love dearly. I'd like to tell you about uh, an event that we have coming up that may be of interest to you. It's called Mental Health First Aid. Mental Health First Aid is a 12-hour, two-day certificate course that teaches the skills and confidence to people uh, so that they may assist others who might be experiencing a mental health problem or developing a mental health crisis. New, mental Health First Aid does not teach us how to be therapists or counselors, but in fact teaches us to be first aiders, much like physical first aid. There are millions of us who have uh, physical first aid training, and we have some level of confidence in knowing what to do if somebody has broken their leg or is in a car accident or has some other physical injury. Mental Health First Aid uh, is also a program just like that. It's an educational program and it does provide uh, a certain level of skills and identification abilities so that you know when somebody might be experiencing a mental health crisis. So this course helps reduce the stigma and increase the confidence level of, of somebody trying to help. Uh, coming up here at New View, our next course offering uh, happens in February on the 23rd and the 24th. We do offer uh, an early bird rate uh, up until February 8th, which includes uh, all materials, lunch, and coffee break items for $150 plus GST. After February 8th, the, the cost will go up to $175. Currently, we do have room on our registry list, but it does tend to fill up. If you are interested in finding out more information, we have a very friendly website at www.newviewsociety.ca, and there you will find a link to further information about our program. And indeed, you can also go to mentalhealthfirstaid.ca, that's www.mentalhealthfirstaid.ca, to find out more information about the course. Thank you for your time. This community program would not be possible without the financial support of our corporate sponsors and community members. Tri-Cities Community Television would like to especially thank the cities of Port Moody, Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam for their belief and support of community television. If you wish to be part of our volunteer team, become a sponsor or make a financial contribution to support community programming, please feel free to contact us at the following locations.